solar eclipse cut in stone from ancient America. For more than 100 years, the Michigan relics have had a long and complicated history with believers of the Book of Mormon. We bring to your attention an astronomical event in the skies over Michigan that occurred 1,669 years ago. The details of this event came from the exact movements of the sun and the moon. Perhaps some of you during your lifetimes have had the excitement of personally witnessing the moon in its ordinary course cover the face of the sun. Of course, no one can change the movements of the sun and the moon. Scientists know a lot about the cycles of the sun. Past solar eclipses are certain points in time, providing essential coordinates of time and place for history. Future solar eclipses always come as predicted, making them one of the few events that we know will happen. The best thing that anyone can do is stand as a witness to one of the most incredible events he will ever see in his lifetime in the sky. Anyone who sees a solar eclipse never forgets it. Such an event is a matter of exact calculation. Please consider the following facts. A. Ancient solar eclipse at 1.20 p.m. Central Time, July 27, AD 352. B. Latitude is 40.7442 West and longitude is 84.2115 North. C. Magnitude of the solar eclipse is 98.8%. D. Duration of the eclipse is 2 minutes, 4.5 seconds, and E. Altitude of the sun was at 67 degrees as seen from the horizon. These facts come from careful calculations, and they are available online from NASA computer programs. Go and make similar astronomical calculations with NASA or another program. What does any of this have to do with one of the nearly thousand artifacts from Michigan that Milton R. Hunter gave to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in the 1970s and that the Church later would give to the state of Michigan in the early 2000s? Take a look at two different pictures of the ancient stone that is part of the Michigan relics today controlled by Michigan State. The first picture was taken when Brother Hunter placed the artifacts in the care and keeping of the Church in the 1970s. For the last 50 years, BYU scholars have had an active contempt and no interest in the Michigan relics. The ancient solar eclipse stone broke in two while it was in the custody of the church. The second picture showed the broken artifact when the church turned it over to the state of Michigan. So sad. In any case, it is possible to measure on the face of the stone the sun's altitude from the Earth's horizon. Mark it down, the angle of the sun to the horizon is 67 degrees. It is the same angle that NASA's calculation confirmed for the solar eclipse in the 4th century. With confidence, we can say that the moon darkened the sun's face for 2 minutes and 4, 5 seconds and made a total eclipse of 98.8% at 1.20 p.m. Central Time on July 27 in the year of AD 352. The ancient person who cut this drawing saw stars in the sky when the sun's darkening. Any child knows that when the sun shines, it is impossible to see the stars. Nevertheless, this artifact, as another confirmation of its authenticity, there were stars in the sky over Michigan in the 4th century at the time of the solar eclipse. In short, the ancient person who cut this stone saw stars when the sun was dark and, as a witness, he made sure to include in his drawing the stars that he saw for only two minutes when the light of the summer sun was no longer in the sky. A solar eclipse always comes when predicted. When it comes, the only thing to do is stand as a witness to one of the significant events that any person will have a chance to see in the sky. Those who see a total eclipse never forget it. Such an event is a matter of exact calculation. The ancient person who cut this stone made sure that there was space in his drawing for stars at the time of the total eclipse time. This is another confirmation that stone has an accurate image of the ancient solar eclipse in the summer sky. In short, the person who cut the stone saw stars when the sun was dark, and, as a witness, he drew those stars next to the sun. How does the history of the Book of Mormon connect to July 2, AD 352? Are there some verses we can find from the book? We know from a careful reading of the Book of Mormon that in AD 350, the Nephite army commander made a treaty with the Lamanites and the Gadite and robbers. The Nephite army agreed to give up any claim to southern lands if their enemies would cease fighting and leave them in peace on the north side of the new border. The peace treaty made a new border where the Mississippi Valley rivers came under the control of the Lamanites. By making this treaty, the Nephites hoped to remain in peace on the north side of a watershed border. Unfortunately, both sides broke the treaty, and 34 years later, large armies gathered at Camorra, where the Nephites fell as they made their last stand. This stone is only one of tens of thousands of stones that are part of the Michigan relics and other artifacts. So much more truth will come out of the ground as we look for it in the right places. God remains in charge of the restoration and His plan is to let the voices of the dead speak from the dust so that the truth will have a chance to come out of the ground.